Operation Cobra. Operation Cobra was the code name for an offensive launched by the 1st United States Army, Lieutenant General Omar Bradley, seven weeks after the two-day landings, during the Normandy campaign of World War II. The intention was to take advantage of the distraction of the Germans by the British and Canadian attacks around Kane, in Operation Goodwood and break through the German defences that were penning in their forces, while the Germans were away. Once a corridor had been created, the First Army would then be able to advance into Brittany, rolling up the German flanks once free of the constraints of the Bocage country. After a slow start the offensive gathered momentum and German resistance collapsed as scattered remnants of broken units fought to escape to the Seine. Lacking the resources to cope with the situation, the German response was ineffectual and the entire Normandy front soon collapsed. Operation Cobra, together with concurrent offensives by the British 2nd Army and the Canadian 1st Army, was decisive in securing an alive victory in the Normandy campaign. Having been delayed several times by poor weather, Operation Cobra commenced on July 25th, with a concentrated aerial bombardment from thousands of Allied aircraft. Supporting offensives had drawn the bulk of German armoured reserves towards the British and Canadian sector and coupled with the general lack of men and material available to the Germans, it was impossible for them to form successive lines of defence. Units of the US 7 Corps led the initial two division assault, while other 1st US Army Corps mounted supporting attacks designed to pin German units in place. Progress was slow on the first day, but opposition started to crumble once the defensive crust had been broken. By July 27, most organized resistance had been overcome and the 7 and 8 Corps advanced rapidly, isolating the Cotenting Peninsula. By July 31, 19 Corps had destroyed the last forces opposing the 1st Army, which emerged from the Bodkage. Reinforcements were moved west by Field Marshal Gunther von Lund employed in various counter-attacks, the largest of which, Antonetten Lutic, Operation Leech, was launched on 7 August between Meriton and Avranches. Although this led to the bloodiest phase of the battle, it was mounted by already exhausted and under strength units and was a costly failure. On 8 August, troops of the newly activated 3rd United States Army captured the city of Le Mans, formerly the German 7th Army headquarters. Operation Cobra transformed the high-intensity infantry combat of Normandy into rapid maneuver warfare and led to the creation of the Falais Pocket and the loss of the German position in northwestern France. Bad ground. Following the successful Allied invasion of Normandy on 6 June 1944, progress in land was slow. To facilitate the Allied build-up in France and to secure room for further expansion, the deepwater port of Cobourg on the western flank of the American sector and the historic town of Caen in the British and Canadian sector to the east, were, were objectives. The original plan for the Normandy campaign envisioned strong offensive efforts in both sectors, in which the Second Army, Lieutenant General Sir Miles Dempsey, would secure Cain and the area south of it and the 1st U.S. Army, Lieutenant General Omar Bradley, would wheel round to the left. General Sir Bernard Montgomery commanding all Allied ground forces in Normandy intended Kent to be taken on D-Day, while Cobourg was expected to fall 15 days later the Second Army was to seize Kent and then form a front to the southeast, extending to Combe and Levant, to acquire airfields and protect the left flank of the 1st U.S. Army as it moved on Cobourg. Possession of Cain and its surroundings desirable for open terrain that would permit maneuver warfare would also give the Second Army a suitable staging area for a push south to capture Falais, which could be used as the pivot for a swing east to advance on Edgington and then the Tricase River. The capture of Cain has been described by the British official historian Lionel Ellis as the most important D-Day objective assigned to the British I Corps, Lieutenant General John Crocker. Ellis and Chester Wilmot called the Allied plan ambitious since the Kane sector contained the strongest defences in Normandy. The initial attempt by our corps to reach the city on D-Day was blocked by elements of the 21st Panzer Division and with the Germans committing most of the reinforcements sent to meet the invasion to the defence of Kane. 
the Anglo-Canadian Front rapidly congealed short of the Second Army's objectives. Operation Perch in the week following D-Day and Operation Epsom, 26-30 June, brought some territorial gains and depleted its defenders, but Kane remained in German hands until Operation Charnwood, 7-9 July, when the Second Army managed to take the northern part of the city up to the River Orna in a frontal assault. The successive Anglo-Canadian offensives around Kane kept the best of the German forces in Normandy, including most of the Emirates to the eastern end of the Allied lodgement, but even so that first US Army made slow progress against dogged German resistance. In part, operations were slow due to the constraints of the Bocage landscape of densely packed bank hedgerows, sunken lanes and small woods, for which US units had not trained. With no ports in Allied hands, all reinforcement and supply had to take place over the beaches via the two Mulberry harbours and was at the mercy of the weather on June 19, a severe storm descended on the English Channel, lasting for three days and causing significant delays to the Allied build-up and the cancellation of some operations. The first US Army advance in the western sector was eventually halted by Bradley before the town of St. Lo to concentrate on the seizure of Kerbourg. The defense of Kerbourg consisted largely of four German battle groups formed from the remnants of units that had retreated up the Cotenting Peninsula, but the port defenses had been designed principally to meet an attack from the sea organized German resistance, finally ended on June 27, when the US 9th Infantry Division managed to reduce the defenses of Cap de la Haye, northwest of the port within four days, 7 Corps, Major General J. Lawton Collins resumed the offensive toward St. Lo, alongside 19 Corps and 8 Corps, causing the Germans to move more and more into the U.S. sector. Planning. The originator of the idea for Operation Cobra is disputed. According to Montgomery's official biographer, the foundation of Operation Cobra was laid on June 13. Planning was immensely aided by detailed ultra-intelligence which supplied up-to-date decodes of communications between Oberkommando der Mott, OKW, the German Armed Forces High Command, and Hitler's generals. Montgomery's plan at that time called for the U.S. First Army to take St. Lo and Quittances and then make two southward thrusts. One from Coman toward Vera and Meriton and the other from St. Lo toward the Lavinia and Atlantis. Although pressure was to be kept up along the Cotentin Peninsula towards La Pito Puits and Valos, the capture of Cobalt was not the priority. With the capture of Cobalt by Seven Corps on June 27, Montgomery's initial timetable was overtaken by events and the thrust from Coman was never adopted. Following the conclusion of Operation Charnwood and the cancellation of the First Army offensive towards St. Lo, Montgomery met with Bradley and Dempsey on July 10 to discuss plans for the 21st Army Group. Bradley said that progress on the western flank was very slow but that plans had been laid for another breakout attempt, Cody named Operation Cobra, to be launched by the First Army on July 18. Montgomery approved the plan and that the strategy would remain a diversion of German attention from the First Army to the British and Canadian sector. Dempsey was instructed to go on hitting, drawing the German strength, especially the armor, onto yourself so as to ease the way for Brad. To accomplish this, Operation Goodwood was planned and Eisenhower ensured that both operations would have the support of the Allied strategic bombers. On July 12, Bradley briefed his commanders on the Cobra plan, which consisted of three phases. The main effort would be under the control of Seven Corps. In the first phase, the breakthrough attack would be conducted by the 9th Infantry Division, Major General Mend Mercedi, and the 30th Infantry Division, Major General Land Hobbs, which would break into the German defensive zone and then hold the flanks of the penetration while the 1st Infantry Division, Major General Clarence Hupen, and 2nd Armour Division, Major General Edward H. Brooks, pushed into the depth of the position until resistance collapsed. The 1st Infantry Division was to take Marigny, with this objective exploited by a stream of General Watson's 3rd Armoured Division Emelat would move south toward Coutances. 
the second armor division part of Collins' exploitation force of the second armor division in the east of the seven core sector and the first infantry division reinforced by combat command B, CCB, of the third armor division in the west would pass through the 30th Infantry Division sector and guard the overall American left flank. If the 7th Corps succeeded, the Western German position would become untenable, permitting a relatively easy advance to the southwest end of the Bocage to cut off and seize the Brittany Peninsula. First Army intelligence estimated that no German counterattack would occur in the first few days after Cobra's launch and that if they did later, they would be no more than battalion-sized operations. Cobra was to be a concentrated attack on a 6,400m, 7,000-yard front, unlike previous American broad-front offensives, and would have a massive air support fighter bombers would concentrate on hitting forward German defenses in the 230m, 250-yard belt immediately south of the St. Lo areas road, while General Spatz's heavy bombers would bomb to a depth of 2,300 m, 2,500 yard, behind the German main line of resistance, it was anticipated that the physical destruction and shock value of a short, intense preliminary bombardment would greatly weaken the German defense or so, in addition to divisional artillery, army, and core level units would provide support, including nine heavy, five medium and seven light artillery battalions more than a thousand divisional and core artillery pieces were committed to the offensive and approximately 140,000 artillery rounds were worked to the operation in seven core, with another 27,000 for eight core. To overcome the constraints of the blockage that had made attacks so difficult and costly for both sides, Rhino modifications were made to some M4 Sherman, M501 Stuart tanks and M10 tank destroyers, by fitting them with hedge breaching tasks that could force a path through hedge roads German tanks remained restricted to the roads, but US armored vehicles could maneuver more freely, although the effectiveness of the devices was exaggerated by the Eve of Cobra, 60% of the tanks of the First Army had the Rhino modification to preserve operational security. Bradley forbade their use until Cobra was launched in all 1,269 M4 medium tanks, 694 M5 one light tanks and 288 M10 tank destroyers were were supporting operations. On July 18th, the British 8 and I Corps to the east of Kane launched Operation Goodwood. The offensive began with the largest air bombardment in support of ground forces yet, with more than 1,000 aircraft dropping 6,000 short tons, 5,400 t, of high explosive and fragmentation bombs from low altitude German positions to the east of Kane were shelled by 400 artillery pieces and many villages were reduced to rubble, the German artillery further to the south, on the Bogwigus Ridge, was outside the range of the British artillery and the defenders of Kenny and Mivil were largely unscathed by the bombardment. This contributed to the losses suffered by 2nd Army, which sustained over 4,800 casualties principally in armoured offensive. Between 250 and 400 British tanks were put out of action, although recent examination suggests that only 140 were completely destroyed with an additional 174 damage. The operation remains the largest tank battle ever fought by the British Army and resulted in the expansion of the Orna Bridgehead and the capture of Kin on the south bank of the Orna. Simultaneously, the two Canadian Corps on the western flank of Goodwood began Operation Atlantic to strengthen the Allied foothold along the banks of the Orna River and take Verres Ridge to the south of Kane. Atlantic made initial gains but ran out of steam as casualties mounted having cost the Canadians 1,349 men and with the heavily defended ridge firmly in German hands, Atlantic was closed down on July 20.